Welcome back. It's still uh, the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa as we focus on security in this discourse. Now, some students of the Abia State University, Uturu, have been kidnapped. The Thursday evening abduction took place in neighboring Imo State as the students were returning from Okigwe Town. Initial reports indicate the armed gang that kidnapped them matched them into the forest along with other travelers. Now, these are still the growing list of mass student abductions, which date back to April 2014, where nearly 300 schoolgirls were abducted in Chibok, Borno State. Now, a public affairs analyst, Kenneth Mweke, is joining us from River State to talk about the best way to keep our schools safe. Many thanks for joining us on this discuss, Mr. Nweke. Good morning. Thank you and good morning. Good all, right, morning. Let's, all right, let's just get into the crux of it right now. In my intro, I talked about how it dates back to 2014, which had the kidnap of the Chi Box student. Then again, we had the Dab Chi uh, schoolgirls uh, attack uh, or kidnap. And in recent time, there has been several. There's Kankara, Kagara, and all over, even now, tertiary institutions. So what exactly have we failed to see since 2014 till now? Yes, I can hear you clearly. We're having a bit of a network yes. issue with... Oh, Mr. Nweke, we're having a bit of a network issue with your line. Let's try to reconnect yeah, with you. I said that today. Um, all right, I think we should just take a break and when we we'll come back, I will try and reconnect with them, Kenneth Nweke, and uh, as we discuss how to keep uh, our school safe uh, in a moment, we'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We still have uh, Kenneth uh, Nweke, a public affairs analyst, and we are looking on how to keep the schools safe uh, with the restive nature of, uh, you know, uh, security and, of course, uh, schools around uh, Nigeria now not being safe. We'll just have to find a way to get lasting solutions to all of these issues. Uh, in my introduction, Mr. Nweke, I talked about uh, how it stemmed uh, from uh, 2014 in Know, with the uh, Chibok uh, abduction to, you know, to Dabchi now, to lots that have happened in Niger and uh, Kaduna State, uh, or of course, uh, with the Greenfield and of course, Afaka uh, Mechanization School. How did we get to all of this, uh, uh, this place that we are at at the moment, and uh, what have we failed to see in this stretch of, uh, you know, seven years or 17 years? I, I think it's a long years of neglect. Um, our government uh, over time, uh, successive government you know, at all level. And so uh, that's, 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 that's what has brought us to where we are today. And so it's not about uh, any political party, it's about um, uh, uh, what I can describe as some kind of uh, responsibility on the part of those who have found themselves in the corridors of power over time at all levels of government, you know, and uh, if I want to use uh, my own word, it's kicked. It's, it's, it's uh, kicked. It's um, so much uh, looted that um, it is beyond the uh, individuals and goes beyond the, you know, uh, uh, partisanship or political party pages and all that. So it's something that uh, is um, staring on everybody's face, no matter uh, the political party, so to say, because it started in 2014, and um, here we are. Another political party was in power at that time, and so it was like um, everything was so easy about that. Then another political party came on board, thinking that uh, it was an easy thing to do, but it all um, um, the totality of the neglect, you know, of those who have governed this country over time, including the president. Mm. So, Mr. Nweke, why do you think schools are being targeted in Nigeria? Of course, that's the easiest place to, you know, access and then maybe because uh, people understand that uh, uh, a lot of people value education or that something that touches, you know, on the heart of the country and every Nigerian. And then it goes beyond the religion you know, when you talk about school and all that. So that is one one place that can touch, you know, the heart of uh, the nation and all that. And I think that that's why you know, those who are engaged in this you know, have sorted to. Uh, uh, doing this so that they 
have a, a big um, access to cash and stabilize the policy. I mean, take a look at your screen right now. You can find, you know, graphics of the details of mass abductions and kidnappings, you know, by Boko Haram insurgents, bandits on schools in Nigeria. This one says here, uh, 2020, December, 344 boys, you know, abducted in Kagara in Katsina State. Lots of this one, I mean, Kagara, Niger State, February 2021. 27 people, you know, kidnapped, one person killed, and the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, just take a look at December 2020, you know, right now, over 600, you know, Nigerians or have been kidnapped. And talking specifically about schools, how can we assure and achieve a safe school environment in Nigeria? Do we now begin to look at alternatives you know, regarding maybe the government deploying soldiers to all public and private secondary schools and universities in Nigeria. Is that the way to go? That may not solve the problem entirely. We need to resort to um, local arrangements because every insecurity is local, you know. So when you want to solve the problem, you have to go look. And so that will have to be done in collaboration with the local, you know, vigilantes, people, at, uh, governments at all levels need to uh, begin to recruit, you know, local vigilantes, you know, that to work uh, in synergy with uh, the security agencies and all that. Because even security agencies don't also understand uh, sometimes what uh, is um, uh, how to follow the, 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 the security situation because the locals understand. The truth is that we are they keeping these ones. The locals also understand where these these people are being kept and. The locals are also involved in these exercises and all that. So, if you want to also solve the problem, go local, you know, and ensure that you uh, um, use uh, the vigilante, local vigilante approach, and then uh, incentivize them, you know, properly, and then uh, profile them properly, and then engage them, you know, and then uh, uh, back them up with love, you know, very well, and then. I mean, to work in synergy with the security agencies. But when you want to tackle problems, you know, the reason people are best of them protecting themselves and going free. And so security agencies... Mr. Nweke, we're losing you, we're unfortunately. Losing we're losing you, Mr. Nweke. We'll try and reconnect with, with him, but... Lots of questions to be asked a lot regarding because, yeah, the situation. Yeah, when you talked about uh, you know, you know, exploring the, the aspect of using local vigilantes, uh, you know, another question just uh, you know, you know, hits my, you know, my mind. Uh, I was like, uh, do you really think that can actually you know, solve this situation that we have in our hands? You know, most of these um, bandits, most of these uh, you know, kidnappers, they bear arms, and uh, the local vigilantes, are we going to uh, be give them the rights to use um, firearms, and mm -hmm. don't you think it will actually lead to proliferation of uh, you know, small weapons and, uh, and uh, light weapons and uh, small arms uh, in Nigeria? Those are the issues we need to look at. Because then again, uh, some people uh, were also talking about uh, you know, lessons and uh, trainings on the self-help. But it asks me, I, I, I bet it beats me because the truth is that when we have, uh, you know, the, the police, when we have uh, the DSS, when we have the NSCDC, you know, why should we resort to helping ourselves uh, when ordinarily these people are the ones uh, constitutionally Good question, you know, Justin. To, Still talking uh, about self-help, uh, you know, we'll be talking about this in detail, but regarding self-help, mm. we've seen over and over over time in the news about communities coming together mm. to contribute money to give to bandits and Boko Haram insurgents as taxes or levies mm. to prevent them from being attacked, to prevent abductions. It's just such a terrible situation that this is what we've gotten to. And um, we've seen lots of people, lots of political affairs analysts prefer solutions. Mm. Right now, Mr. Kenneth Nweke is saying, let's involve the local vigilantes. We've seen prominent Nigerians like former Vice President Atiku Abubakar says, let's reintegrate the retired military personnel, people who have retired. Mm. But reacting to this, other analysts say, these are people who 
these are military, retired military people who did not possibly get their pension, who are not well taken care of, who are sick in the hospital without money to take care of their health. So how do you then integrate, or as this, we call these people to come back into, into active, active military service, service yeah. when they basically were abandoned and were not taken care of, you know, in the time of retirement? Because if they were not taken uh, care of or when they were in active um, duty, you know, their enumeration, uh, their pensions and all that are not paid as and when do you, I mean, there'll be no, you know, Incentive, really, Incentive, to come you know, back. There's a, it would just be lackluster, if you asked me. You know. Yes. Mr. Kenneth Nwake, do we have you now? Oh, all right. So let's uh, quickly wrap up this conversation. How do we keep our schools safe? You know, like I discussed with Mr. Nwake, he's, it seems that, you know, militarizing our uh, schools might not necessarily be the answer. Getting soldiers to man schools mm -hmm. across the country might not be the answer. Do we even have enough men, mm -hmm. you know, to take them away from and the some war fronts? Some people believe that even if they are even overwhelmed uh, with, uh, you know, the bulk of uh, the issues happening in the country. Yes. So it really, it is really sad. But would, would want to would want to engage our viewers, uh, you know, on this particular matter. You know, you can just interact with us on all our various uh, social media platforms. Let's hear from you. Let's, uh, you know, you know, get your feedback concerning all of these issues and what you think are profitable solutions uh, at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and of course uh, Instagram. Yes, indeed. And uh, questions, really burning questions, we need mm. to ask. Remember when the federal government, you know, uh, began the Safe School Initiative? Mm. We know how the United Nations envoy for global education got involved millions of dollars pledged to make sure that schools are safe for our kids but how how effective is that they're been? calling for a probe of it there's really? several probes in Nigeria. like Justin has said engage with us on all our social media platforms it's at plus TV Africa on Facebook social um, Facebook Twitter, Twitter and, and Instagram. Instagram we'll be right back to talk more about security with uh, representatives in Kaduna State to stay with us <laughs>